Whoa, 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 everybody. Check it out. We get the two biggest CRTs I think I've ever seen in my life. A couple of Mitsubishi 40-inch CRT televisions here. And look, I'm sorry, you might hear a little bit of background noise. I am at the Museum of Fine Arts here in Houston, and we're doing a CRT class, and that's cathode ray tube class, of course. And so I just wanted to show you some of the amazing CRTs they have here starting with these unbelievable Mitsubishis. First, let's just look around the back. We have the Mitsubishi CS40307, 120 volts, 60 hertz, 199 watts. This is from May of 1996. We have coax for VHF and UHF. And then of course, just a couple composite video inputs as well as S-video. So. Look at that. Yeah, uh, there's there's something about purity where you can tell this whether the TV's facing north, south, or neutral to kind of help your um, your purity because these tubes would obviously need a lot of good degaussing and could easily be impacted from the uh, difference in size of the tube and the magnetism. You can definitely get to into the picture, but. I've already got a Super Nintendo here with S-Video coming out of it. And we're going to turn this TV on and get a good look at it to see how it looks. This is a very dirty one. We've got power, volume, channel, input, and there's even an extra degaussing button on there and an AV reset. Look, I've already got the 240p monoscope pattern pulled up. And just check it out. I didn't think that... Wow, look at that geometry. It's actually not half bad for just firing it up. It looks really good. I'm, I'm really surprised by that. All right, so up here in the left-hand corner, we can see some obvious purity issues. So that's what that switch is there for, to help you clear up the purity and not end up with that kind of a glaring purity problem where the color is just changed over here in this upper left-hand corner. Pretty good linearity, huh? Not bad. We're gonna get in here real quick and look at the scan lines on some video games. Well, so the screen looks pretty great, but we still should try to do something about this purity. Let's try to use the external degaussing wand and see if we can't get it to clear up a little bit. Well, that looks pretty trippy. Holy moly. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still not one to really look 
clean up. Like that's the best I've been able to clear it up so far. Well, everybody, there's the second one. It's a little bit cleaner, and it still has a little bit of a purity issue. Not as a, not as bad as the first time. That's definitely the biggest problem with this size of a tube is getting the interference cleared up. You saw when I tried to do with the other one, I was still having trouble even with the wand. If you just look at the stands. It actually this person who originally bought these did have a stand system built, and actually these custom boxes for it because he was using them as his promotional pieces for businesses. It's his sticker right there from California. And after he closed up, he sold these to the museum and they have those cool custom wood plates at the bottom to hold them in place. And then you could sit there and take a forklift actually and lift this up and set it on top of these two boxes at an art show or display or something. So that's real reasoning behind them. But really cool stuff is Mitsubishi's. They come with remotes. If you ever see one of these and you want the biggest shadow mask tube, this might be your chance. And uh, just really thrilled to get to look at them. Thanks for joining me today. If you're interested in learning more about the Houston trip I took out to the museum, please check out my podcast, the Cathode Ray podcast I do on the Zez Retro channel. That's my buddy Zez and myself. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, everybody.